Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup with People's Dispatch where we bring you some of the top stories from across the globe. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Israeli occupation force demolishes Palestinian COVID-19 center despite rising number of cases. Abduction of veteran journalists in Pakistani capital raises alarm for rights groups and journalists. Malaysian court hears appeal against caning sentence to Rohingya refugees. Devastating floods in India's northeast and Bangladesh kill 173 and displace 8.5 million people. We begin with an update on the COVID-19 pandemic. Globally, the number of infections have reached over 15 million cases with around 620,000 fatalities reported as of today afternoon. The number of new cases reported yesterday was over 239,000. Now moving on to Palestine, on Tuesday, Israeli armed forces demolished a Palestinian COVID-19 testing facility in Hebron, in the occupied West Bank. The testing facility was doubling up as a quarantine center for Palestinians. Construction at the drive through facility was still going on when the Israeli authorities carried out the demolition, citing lack of construction permits from Israel. The construction for the facility was underway for the past three months. The facility was being built to reduce pressure on hospitals in the area which have already reached full capacity due to the rapid spread of the virus. The owner of the land who was building the facility accused Israeli authorities of deliberately conspiring to facilitate COVID-19 outbreak among Palestinians in Hebron. It was reported that while carrying out the demolition, the Israeli personnel confiscated all testing and other medical equipment beforehand. The number of COVID-19 cases in the occupied Palestinian territories of West Bank, Gaza and East, and East Jerusalem has reached close to 11,000 cases with 67 deaths. Activists have alleged that such moves may be an Israeli tactic to pressure the Palestinian Authority to resume bureaucratic and administrative coordination with Israel. The PA had cut all ties with Israel recently after Israel announced a proposed annexation of large parts of the occupied West Bank including all illegal Israeli settlements and the Jordan Valley. In Pakistan, the abduction and subsequent release of senior journalist Mathiullah Jan has raised concerns among rights groups and journalists over the curbing of political dissent in the country. Jan was abducted from Islamabad's G6 sector on Tuesday and was missing for nearly 12 hours. Organizations including the Human Rights Commission of Pakistan or the HRCP, Amnesty International, Freedom Network and Pakistan Bar Council raised concerns of attempts to suppress the media and create an environment of constant fear. This is not the first time that Jan was targeted. He faced a similar attack by unidentified persons in 2017 as well. Known for being critical of both Prime Minister Imran Khan and the country's military, Jan's incendiary reporting has been more vocal after he resigned from the Vakt News talk show. Last week, the Supreme Court issued a notice to him for his social media remark in which he has also criticized the judiciary. While condemning the abduction attempt and overall censorship in the country, the Secretary General of Pakistan Federal Union of Journalists, Nasir Zaidi, noted that the reason behind the abduction was intolerance of criticism on the part of the government and the state. Pakistan Bar Council Vice President Abid Saki called the current situation in the country worrisome. Reporters Without Borders report has put Pakistan at 145th rank out of 180 countries in its 2020 World Press Freedom Index. Now moving on to Malaysia, human rights activists have called for the courts to drop a recent punishment imposed on asylum seekers by a local court in Malaysia as it is cruel and barbaric. According to Colin Andrew, a human rights lawyer representing arrested refugees, a higher court has heard the appeal against a caning sentence for a group of Rohingya asylum seekers today. 40 Rohingya were sentenced to jail in June, of whom 20 men were also sentenced to be caned by a court in the Langkawi district in the northwestern end of Malaysia. In April, authorities had seized a refugee boat carrying nearly 202 Rohingyas. Since then, 31 men and 9 women have been sentenced to 7 months in prison for violating immigration laws by arriving by boat without valid permits. Of them, 20 were sentenced to be caned thrice each along with jail time, while 14 minors among them are currently charged separately. Human rights advocates are reportedly also pursuing cases of wrongful arrest against six teenagers among the detained refugees, including two girls who were charged as adults. Since March, Malaysian authorities have been cracking down on undocumented migrants and asylum seekers in the country during the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Malaysia, which does not recognize any rights of asylum seekers, has reportedly witnessed a sharp rise in arrest and detention of Rohingyas. More than 1,000 refugees are currently detained by authorities, according to several estimates, while many refugee boats have been left stranded in the sea. Finally, we take a look at the situation in northeastern India and Bangladesh after floods have devastated the region and caused massive loss of life and property. And that is all we have in this episode of the International Daily Roundup. For more such stories and videos, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching. Yeah,